Tom had to go and visit a neighbour down the road, he said. He left at five o'clock in the morning. He's going to be back at 10.30. So there's a five and a half hour trip to go see the neighbour. Hello and welcome to a new chapter of Grizzly and Bear Overland with Lee and Steffi. We are currently on a remote station in Adbat, New South Wales, between Broken Hill and Mildura. The beginning of an entirely new, super exciting chapter in our lives. Welcome to our new home. We just arrived. This is gonna be our room. We've met the owner, Beck, who's a super nice lady. Beck and Tom have been so lovely to have um, bought us, because this only had this single uh, bed in here. They've got a new bed frame, but not a mattress yet. But we've got our double mattress, which is our Japanese futon that we bought whilst we were in Japan. It's gonna be embarrassing if I can't figure out how to put the bed together. Probably they're just gonna ask us to leave straight away. <laughs> What's half of 950? It's quite cool we get to sleep on our own mattress. This Japanese futon is the most comfy mattress and fits perfectly in our four wheel camper and in our station donger. Good enough. <laughs> in the meantime, I was unloading the ton of food we bought for the next months. I made a display so we could take a thumbnail photo. The sort of things you have to do when you have a YouTube channel. At this point, I was hoping that no one would walk past, thinking that we were a little bit strange. I'm so excited. So Beck, the station owner, she just came wandering across uh, with this meat, all grown here on the station. We've got pork, we've got lamb, we've got beef, and from the dam, which we weren't expecting, we've got a whole bag full of yabbies. They're like lobsters, but fresh water. There is a fire ban in summer in Australia. We can't use a litre of rye. Tom wasn't having us cooking the beautiful meat on the gas stove, so he built us this amazing barbecue. Through Outback Barbie, that one. Look. What is a station, you may ask? A station is a large Australian land holding used for producing livestock that need an extensive range of grazing land. We could probably compare a station to a North American ranch. This is the homestead where live the owners. There is also a shed, a workshop, rooms for employees and visitors, fuel station, storage container and school room. The station is so far away that it's not uncommon to have friends visiting with their private plans or helicopter. We will be removing Grizzly. Grizzly's gonna go right there inside the shed. Give it a good pressure wash. I'm gonna clean it up. We love our uh, Grizzly. We love our full-time tiny home. As you guys maybe know, if you followed us for a little while, we do take regular breaks. And I think that's important if you want to keep it fresh, be inspired and motivated to continue a long-term full-time overlanding sort of journey. I think it is important to take breaks when they arise or when you get the opportunity from your camper. See what it's like to live in a real house, an actual place for a little while. Internet access is a bit of an issue. Internet out here is really, really low. This is gonna be quite complicated for our YouTube videos. Don't know how we're gonna deal with that yet. The upload is like so slow. This is what we're doing at the moment. Steffi's got the laptop here, my phone on a hotspot. That's what we're trying to upload the video with because up there in the sand flag, at that sort of height, we sometimes get 4G. It's all part of the adventure and the station is on manpower. The owners had to get the power poles installed themselves, 8.5 kilometers away from the main. They also have a generator as a backup. The water is coming from various sources and stored in massive tanks. 
The biggest one is 55,000 gallons of rainwater for the house. The second one is 26,000 gallons of dam water for the garden. The dam is located 4 kilometers away from the homestead. It took Tom 500 hours of digging with heavy machinery during a drought to dig it to the size it is now. An old pump will direct the water to the tank through a PVC pipe. On the property there are also other dams and various bore water pumps for the animals. Down there I can see the destination, which is a water tank. We've got some happy Dorper sheep down there now. The prices of diesel or fuel in general are going through the roof. There is even a fuel station on site with diesel and unleaded. The mission today given to us by Tom is to go around to every single vehicle and we have to fill every single one of them with diesel because today the local diesel supply guy is going to be bringing a bulk amount here get it before there's there's rumors it may hit two dollars fifty a litre here in Australia and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah everything so we're filling up everything so the diesel truck has arrived now the tanker filling up the main diesel tank 6,000 litres of diesel. What about garbage disposal you're gonna ask? Obviously no truck is coming to collect it over here. There is a tip on the property, 4 kilometres away from the homestead. A massive hole in the ground where the rubbish gets dumped. Once it's full it will be buried and a new one dug. There is no smell and pest as all the food scraps I fed to the chickens. Almost a completely self-sufficient farm. They grow their own veggies, fruit, and they've got a lot of animals. They grow their own meat. The chooks are not used for chicken meat, only for laying eggs. The meat is grown responsibly and sustainably on the station and we believe that if you choose to eat meat, it's important to know where it comes from. Beck also grows the vegetables for the family and two years ago she planted a lot of fruit trees including mango, avocado, citrus, pistachios, apple. The trip to the supermarket, 250 kilometers away, only happens every five to six weeks. The food has to be refrigerated during transport. Back at the homestead, it is stored in a big cool room and into freezers. Thank you to our very good friends at Euro 4x4 Parts. Once a week, on a Wednesday, it's delivery time. We have to drive to the end of the driveway, 12 kilometers away from the homestead, to collect mails, parcels, kept in a box under a tree. Depending who is on duty, sometimes the delivery is done all the way to the house. That's a bonus. Delivery all the way from France by uh, old mate Mr. Posty over there. He is out of here. Tom and Beck have three gorgeous children. They have their own school in the backyard, doing a program called School of the Air with a governess, Belinda. I will be very interested to tell you more about the school in a future video. First day working on Girawin Station. Bloody awesome stuff. I'm working together with uh, Luke, who's the full-time station hand. Name's Luke. Station boy, born and bred. I grew up on a property called Yalik. 120,000 acres, 150 k's from here. I've been working on the land ever since I was born, really. Lovely weekend, so good on you, Bessie. Oh, Bessie. Went mining for a bit, and then had my own business in transport, and then come back to the land again. My role here is station hand. I cover all aspects of the running of the business here. 
We are extremely grateful for the support of our amazing patrons on Patreon. They financially support our work producing weekly videos. They keep us on the road and we are very thankful for it. But now we need to start saving money for the next big shipping. It could be Africa, could be America. We haven't decided yet. So that is one of the several reasons we are here working on a remote station. Put your hat back on. take these bales of hay up to the livestock in the rear paddock. Have a look at the guns on that bloke, bloody hell. I'm gonna have a crack at this bale of hay here. Luke did the first one, he made it look so easy. How much are in these you reckon? About six, seven hundred kilos. Second string from the bottom. Second string from the bottom. No more hints, he says you're on your own. You're on your own, buddy. Oh God. <laughs> Bloody hell, it's heavy. Oh, and I haven't even given it a good one because it's resting on the trailer. Every day will be super interesting working on the station. Always something different and always uh, good fun, I reckon. I'm in a 79 series Toyota today. I'm in Luke's. I will say beautiful 79 series. My first time driving a 79 series. It's pretty nice. It's not bad at all. Welcome to week number two. Today we are going to be finishing up our roofing job over at Luke's Accommodation. The dongers over there, we're going to put the roof on, do the guttering today and the downpipes and the flashing. It's called Imi Bush. Give it a stir. Make a bigger hole so the root can go through because the ground is so hard. It's like rock solid. How many you got to do, Steffi? 50. How hot do you think it is? 50. So the hardest part of the job is actually to find the main pipe. But when you got it, you've got a little puncture tool. Then you've got a little tea piece. Put a bit of super glue on there just to prevent any leak. That's it. Yeah. Connection. There we go. You know who would be proud of you? Your mum, Evelyn. Evelyn uh, is an absolute jack of all trades. She is incredible. Well, your mum would definitely be proud today. There's no doubt about it. Done? Planning some more emu bush. Not so much uh, shovel action. We have got the dingo. She's got a string line running along there to make sure that the emu bush plants are exactly in line. That's it for today. We hope you enjoyed the introduction to the station life. We have plenty more to share. I've just taken a sample for brucellosis. Stay tuned and we'll see you next time. <coughs> I just swallowed a flight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> makeup. <laughs> I don't need makeup, sorry, man. Uh.